Hey guys, how's it going? On today's video, we'll be installing Ireland Engineering's aftermarket sway bars. These are their 22 millimeter front and their 19 millimeter rear. They will come blue, but I had them repowder coated red to match my build. One thing to start is you wanna make sure you upgrade, especially on your E30, your front uh, sway bar mounts. So if you check right here on the subframe, we have, it has been reinforced. It's a plate from Gradistic. Uh, that you can have welded onto your your subframe that reinforces the the sway bar mount. You also want to do it in the rear, little sneak peek, um, and you want to make sure you do it on both spots, and uh, that will make sure it doesn't snap under load. So I'm going to start off by installing the rear, uh, which is this one without the adjustment. The front has some adjustment holes. And unfortunately, I will not be installing the front um, end link. This will go into an E30. This will go into your E30 uh, control arm, and then this will go into the sway bar. Um, I'm going uh, five lug, so my end link will be going from the sway bar to my strut. So let's get let's get started installing the rear, and uh, I'll see you underneath the car. Also, I highly recommend safety glasses when you're underneath the car uh, when you when you use an impact or just you know wrenching and knock something get some dirt in your eye not worth it just put some safety glasses on and you'll be all good okay now that we're underneath the car I'm lucky because I have my uh, subframe out so this is gonna be a lot easier than it is uh, with it in so you could see here we have a 13 millimeter nut and it's kind of just hooks into the top there and then it runs all the way across and another one right here. So with the Ireland engineering kit, we will be drilling uh, here. Uh, like I said, it's easier since I have the subframe out uh, to make this uh, the, the drilling a lot easier. So what you're gonna wanna do is you can either disconnect the hose for the gas tank or just undo it and you know, you're gonna slide it out this way. So, so you can definitely see the thickness compared to the two and that this one curbs down and then curbs back in so that your point lines up with your uh, trailing arm where this one just comes out and straight and then you have that which goes straight to your your trailing arm instead of it curving back in so I'm gonna line these up in there and then we'll mark our holes to drill and then we'll go from there so actually what I'm gonna do is I want to install uh, the brackets just basically on here so that when I drill these, drill the two holes, I want to make sure they're perfectly straight and it's not crooked or it's not, it's not over one way. We want them to be very straight. So you're simply just going to pull it out. And so we're going to, we want it to go like this and like this. So there's a little opening in it. It's pretty tough. So just make sure you have it set the way you want it to go. That's gonna go like, like this. So I'm gonna open it and then press it down into it. So we're just going to open it by hand. Stretch it up by hand a little bit and then just kind of press it in there and it will go right on. And then this will just sandwich itself in there it's going to be a little bit tougher since the bushing's now in because there's a little bit of an opening uh, but just kind of squeeze it in there and it will it will go in there we go so that's nice and taut and you can move it around just a little bit and then we'll just do it to the other side as well okay so i'm going to bring this bar over there and we'll get it installed so i'm going to take my punch and I'm just going to try to center it perfectly in the hole. And just drive it in there. It's a little dark, but you just want to make sure you have nothing, no wires or your carpet or anything on the surface here as we will be drilling through it. Um, when I come to the top, I'll add more light, but just make sure that's nice and clear. Uh, I think I'm going to start with a 1364 ths uh, just to get a nice pilot hole and then probably move up to either a fourth or uh, a five sixteenths for the actual hole. 
So I'm going to get underneath the car and start drilling. Okay, so I finished drilling with the 5 sixteenths. There's the hole. And let's see. There is... Oops, caught on my... There's the other hole. Uh, it's a little easier for me to do this just because I cut out my taillight section because I have to re-weld it in. So uh, I did the 5, five sixteenth is the perfect size uh, with the hardware that is included. Uh, like I said, make sure there's no wiring over there. And uh, so now we have to do the second hole, which is a little bit more of a pain because you can't uh, set, set it exactly where you want it. Well, I got this one in. I still got to drill the other side. But what I did was I tried to line it up best with this line um, and maybe just a tiny bit over. As you can see, it's not perfectly straight. It's a, more a little bit of an angle. I did, you know, drill a hole and then had to drill another one trying to connect it. Uh, but that's not going anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the bolt. Let's undo that. Drop that. Grab the bracket. Put it through. And then what I'll probably do is, if this one is in a little bit this way, I'll just barely, you want to get it as straight with this line right here. And I think I'm just going to barely go over to something just like that, maybe a tiny bit over a little bit more. And then I'm just going to throw a punch in there and then and then unbolt it from the bottom and tilt it because you don't want the drill bit going through and hitting the threads on the mount. And you don't, definitely don't want the burrs going in. Uh, so unbolt it from the bottom, tilt it forward, drill it, check it, and then I'll be back when it's done. So this is just what I meant for underneath. You want to just pull it off the bracket, tilt it forward uh, so that the, the burrs don't go into the, the mount. So I'm going to go on the top, drill it, and hopefully I'll be dead on. So I drilled, and you can see that I am just off. So I'm going to drill, you know, a little bit more in, like, right there and go through it, and it should be just fine. Okay, just wanted to show not perfect by any means. Uh, luckily, I'm going to be repainting my trunk again, uh, so it's not a huge deal to me. But uh, if there's still, like, a little piece left or a little sliver, I mean, just take a chisel and a hammer, and the metal's thin, that it'll just cut right through it. So now that that's there... Line the bracket up, start with this one, just to get it nice and threaded in, threads right in, move that around to get that, then just go on the underside and do it. It's easier with two people, uh, so one person can hold the top and the other can hold the bottom. I'm just going to put a ratchet on there and then put it against uh, the, the tub. If it scratches, it scratches, not a huge deal. Or put, you know, a blanket or something and just crank it from the bottom. And it'll hold it against the wall. Um, I'm going to put blue thread locker on everything. And then I will uh, go grab the end links and slip those on. Everything's torqued down. Oh, actually, everything's tightened. I didn't torque it to anything. I just tightened it till it really didn't want to go anymore. And that's my little way of, of keeping the top bolt uh, snug while I'm underneath doing it. Uh, unless you have someone else and it's easier and you don't have to worry about scratching your paint or anything. Um, I'm going to go get the end links and put them on. They're just going to be loose until I get the subframe in. And then I'll continue with that when the subframe's in. And then we can move on to doing the front. So these are the rear end links. I'm going to quickly disassemble them before I put them in. So this is the reinforcement plate that goes onto your sway bar that Ireland Engineering includes. Um, there are many companies like Grogistic that sell it as well. So that just gets sandwiched, sandwiched in there. And then we can compare this, the bucket, to the stock one. And you can see how thin the stock one is compared to this. So. You always want to make sure you upgrade your end links. This I will simply just install loosely into the trailing arm so that when we line everything up, we can then tighten it into place. So I actually had to go back through and drill out the holes uh, to 7 16th to make sure that this fits nice and snug in there. So just one, one washer on top, one washer on the bottom. I know you can't see much right now. 
And then we're, again, just loosely installing this onto the onto the trailing arm. So I got the end link on. Um, I had to. I took this piece off right here, and then took just a chisel or something that has like a that has a groove, and then it open like it can open it up a little bit. So I opened it up a little bit and then tapped it tapped it on. Um, I'm not gonna. I don't know how far back it needs to go just yet. So I'm just gonna put it there and it's straight. And once the trailing arm's in. Um, I'll adjust it um, when I go for an alignment um, I'm gonna ha ask them to adjust all the sway bar stuff uh, as well so I'm gonna go do the other side and then let's get on to doing the front got the other side on everything is loose nothing's tight uh, just so you can fit everything up before tightening it so let's go start on installing the front sway bar don't mind the spring but I got the end links on, it's a 17 on the bottom and then a 14 and a 14. Okay, so let's get the front sway bar uh, halfway reinstalled. So the install is actually really easy. If it's uh, if this is in the car, you will need to remove the one subframe bolt as it will go through the bracket right here. So with the, with the uh, adjustments facing up, you'll just you know slide it close and it's just a 13 mil knot and a 13 mil bolt with two washers on both sides. So obviously that will feed through the hole and then you have this really nice thick uh, metal bracket that will make up the space right here. So this sits nice and flush and then you have the other bolt. So the one bolt goes through here, the other one goes through your subframe bolt. So we'll just Get this open, put it through, open it up, slide it through, pop it back in, add the bracket, slide it under, grab your hardware. I'm gonna go um, bolt going up. You can really choose whatever way you wanna do it. So bolt going up, make sure there's a washer between each, another washer. And just cinch it, cinch it down. I'm not going to torque it down just yet uh, until I get the other subframe bolt through and we have this up in the car. So let's do the other side and then we'll get it up into the car. Okay, so to finish installing the front sway bar since it's now on the car, take a nice subframe bolt. You're going to fit it through both the brackets and up into the subframe and then tighten it down. Alrighty, now that the front and rear sway bars are installed, let's go mess with the end links. So your sway bars, you want to be parallel to the ground. So with, with the weight of the car on the ground, once you've figured out your ride height or your, your adjusted ride height to where you, you, you know, you, your brief idea of where you want it, and with the car on the ground, the car has to be on the ground to mess with adjusting the sway bar and the sway bar end link. With the weight of the car on the ground, you want the sway bar, the actual bar itself, and I know it's hard to see here, but you want it perpendicular or parallel to the ground. So you want it completely flat, completely horizontal. Um, and you will adjust this up or down, depending on what you need it to be, to get that red bar or your blue bar or whatever co bar color you have to be perfectly horizontal. Um, if you adjust it while the car is in the air and you make it horizontal, when you put it, when you lower it down, it'll end up sticking up uh, instead of being flat. So that's why the car must be on the ground. The weight of the car needs to be on the ground. Uh, so that's it for the rear. There's not much adjustment you can do uh, besides just setting it up correctly. Unlike the front, where you have three holes on this the on this Ireland Engineering. Uh, set up to choose from from soft medium and hard uh, for stiff stiffness in the front so let me get the wheel on and let's move on to the front of the car since the rear is done alrighty so now let's talk about the front so it's the same idea where the car needs to be on the ground for this to be adjusted properly uh, so 
with an E30 setup, with a stock E30 setup, you will not have this end link right here. You will have your basic um, end link that goes from here to your control arm. It's just a, you can use a stock end link and that's all you'll need. You could use an aftermarket end link, but there is not a, uh, a ton of room in between the two. Uh, so that goes from there to your control arm. But with the setup I have here for a, a five lug swap on an E30 using a E36 M3 um, uh, suspension, you will use the end link mount on the strut to your sway bar. This is a seven inch end link from Grogistic, adjustable end link uh, from Grogistic. Uh, they can help you out with custom sizes and whatnot of exactly what you need, or you can just order it straight off their website and it's ready to uh, go. Uh, with the rear, you're just gonna use the one that is including, included with the your suspension kit. For the front, uh, most likely you will need something else. Uh, so with the Ireland sway bar and with most aftermarket adjustable sway, front sway bars, as you can see, let's see if I can adjust the light a little better. That's a little better. As you can see, there are three holes, one, two, and three. So you have, uh, Firm, medium, and soft. So I have taken the car already out to the, the canyons, and and the car doesn't have great tires on it. It's just got some line hearts just as rollers. And I was pushing, you know, right through. I, I was understeering a, a bunch. So a way to fix that would be to move this bar, which is currently in the middle, would move it forward, which makes the front softer, so it bites more. Or let's say you were kicking the rear out way too much and you want a little bit more uh, feeling in the front, you'd actually stiffen it up a little bit. Um, so that's how you adjust these back and forth. And then each time you move it, you will have to make sure that this bar, uh, this bar, excuse me, this bar is straight again. So your measurement from the strut down to the sway bar in the middle is going to be different from the strut to the first loop or to the second loop or to the last loop so each time you will need to adjust it and the car must be on the ground so that the bar is perfectly parallel to the floor so you want it 90 degrees to this basically and parallel to the floor and that will get you your uh, your correct adjusting your sway bar correctly so that wraps up the Ireland engineering adjustable sway bar install on the E30 Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, have a great day.